Kingdom Kids. I'm so glad you're here to worship with us on a Sunday morning. I'm so excited to worship with you. Why don't you stand all the way out to your feet, reach all the way out to your sky, reach down and touch your toes. Oh yeah, get it all out. High five your neighbor, whoever's there with you. And I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I love you. Sydney, I love you. I love you too, Sister Riley. Oh my goodness. I think we're just going to be feeling all sorts of lovey feelings today. But first, let's worship the one who loves us the most. Jesus, you're my superhero. that song that one is super super fun we're gonna do this next worship song and I want you to get all your wiggles out on this one this is me without you Fade away. 
this next song is going to be super fun, one of my favorites. We're going to be talking about fruit, but not just the real kind of fruit, but all the fruits of the Spirit. Let's do it, guys. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. You wanna be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. as well hear it you can't be a fruit of the spirit cause the fruit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and gentleness and self-control love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and gentleness and self-control oh the fruit of the spirit is not a lemon the fruit of the spirit is not a lemon if you want to be a lemon you might as well hear it you can't be a fruit of the spirit cause the fruit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and gentleness and self-control Not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self control. Oh. All right, wherever you are, hey. find a partner. We're going to do everybody great. Knows. Here we go. Grace, come in bunches. So everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit is not a great. The fruit of the spirit is not a great. because we have a very special person who's going to come and talk about one of the fruit of the spirits today. Can you guess what it is? I gave you a hint at the beginning. Well, let's see if you're right. Give it up for Sister Joy. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, woo. Hi, guys. We're so glad to be here. Oh, my goodness. Another week in quarantine, or at least social distancing, right? So today we're going to be talking about Yes, Sister Raleigh gave you a little sneak, sneak preview. So we're going to be talking about love. Right now, I want you to go find something that would remind you of love or make you feel loved. You have 20 seconds to do this. So on your mark, get set and go. You could get a picture. You can get a stuffed animal. Maybe you can get your brother or sister. They might be sitting right by you. Maybe that's make you, who makes you feel loved. But find something that makes you feel loved. Come on, go, go, go. Do it, do it. Run, run, run. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Maybe say, Sister Joy, I can't think of anything that I've got that reminds me of love or makes me feel loved. Maybe you have a memory in your head, and you're just going to hold that memory in your heart because that's what makes you feel loved. All right, time's up. Did you get something? I hope you have it right there with you. We're going to talk about love today. We're, we're going to do a series. Sister Madeline and I are doing a series on the fruit of the Spirit. And in Galatians, it talks about Galatians 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Now, that's the King James Version. So, in kind of like American language, it's our song, like we just sang. Love, joy, peace, 
long-suffering, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. All those wonderful things that we've talked about, it's the same thing. It's just kind of like synonyms. If you are thinking of a synonym, your teachers probably talked about that. A word that means the same thing as something else. Now, fruit. What does that mean? So in our, as a noun, because there's noun and a verb. As a noun, it means like a fruit, like a piece of fruit. You might look at this. This is actually probably Greek to me. Actually, it's Latin. So let's go for a more Americanized version or English words. So you've got a stem, a leaf, a seed, flesh, and skin. And all those make up a part of a fruit. So if we were going to say, okay, what is the fruit of the Spirit as far as a noun goes? Then we might say it is, the parts of it are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so we're going to talk about love today. And we want to talk about fruit as a verb. So if you think of fruit as a verb, Jesus said, by your fruits, you're going to know them. And if you went to an apple tree and you saw a banana on an apple tree, you would say, there's something wrong with this apple tree. Because an apple tree shouldn't have anything but apples on it. Jesus talked about it. He said, by your fruits, you will know them. So he said, can you pick up grapes off of a thorn bush? No, we can't get grapes off of a thorn bush. The same way it is with us. Now, we're kind of likened like a tree in the Bible. So sometimes they'll talk about trees as men or as people. So we're kind of like trees. The Bible says that a healthy tree is going to produce healthy fruit. And the fruit of our labor is something that we do. So if you think of fruit as a verb... It's kind of like the evidence of what you see or the result of something. So, like, if your mom was going to tell you to clean up your room, per se, she told you, clean up your room. Well, when she walks in your room, she is going to hopefully see a clean room. She's not going to see all the things on the floor and on the bed. She's going to see actually a clean room. Now, she doesn't see your work necessarily, but she sees the fruit of your work or the evidence of your work. So the evidence of your work or the fruit of the Spirit is all of these things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, kindness, self-control. And we're going to talk about one today. We're going to talk about love. Now, in a long time ago, when they wrote the New Testament, it was written in Greek. And kind of why I said that's great to me inside joke guys sorry um, but there the Greek for the word love was agape and so Paul's using the word agape when he's talking about love and then in first Corinthians he tells us what agape love is he says that I'm going to go to my Bible first Corinthians 13 4 and 8 4 through 8 says, charity suffereth long. Now, wait a minute. It says charity. How does that mean love? Now, King James in 1611, yes, that was a long time ago since we were in 2020. In 1611, he decided that everyone needed to have their own Bible. So he translated the Greek into English. But guess what? It was kind of like Shakespearean English. Kind of words sometimes that we don't always use or a little archaic or something maybe we don't understand. So charity, if you look at that word, it actually was the agape word love. So instead of saying charity, I'm going to say love. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So, let's talk about the first one, love. Love suffereth long. Long suffering. That kind of means that you're being patient and brave when you're dealing with troubles. So some of you might be thinking about today. Here I am. We're in social isolation, social distancing. We're maybe quarantined or in a stay-at-home pattern. Oh, my goodness. I bet you feel like you are suffering long. And the Bible says that love 
is patient and suffers uh, and is brave when dealing with troubles. So that's what it means by charity suffereth long or has long suffering. The next one is kind. Charity is kind, friendly, generous, and considerate. So if you think of how you might be interacting with your brothers and sisters right now, especially maybe you're thinking, okay, how can I be friendly or generous or considerate? You know, when you want to watch your TV show or your Netflix show and your friend wants to watch something different or you, I mean, your sister or brother, whoever's with you there, you might be generous or considerate of them. You might be friendly. Like in the morning when you wake up, if you're not in that great of a mood, you might think, Lord, help me to have that fruit of the spirit of love and to be nice and kind to my siblings and my mom and my dad too that's you know they're dealing with this as well all right the next one is charity envious not i'm only going to do a few of these but charity envious not charity is where you're not showing in your feeling or showing envy to someone or their achievements or their advantages so you're not you're not going to um, show that, like, okay, my friend got, has a nicer house than I do. Love doesn't do that. Love doesn't envy. They don't say, you know what, I hate, you know, they got picked to be the, the lead in the play, and I didn't get that. So, you know, we have to think about not being envying. All right, the next one, charity, vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. So this could be like boastful, having haughty, excessive pride or self-satisfaction in one's own accomplishments or abilities. So kind of like showboating. If you look at this, here's the guy in the, he's in the red and white shorts, and he has been showboating because he thinks he has this whipped. And the other guy was pretty beaten. And there he started showboating, and that was his downfall. The Bible does say, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So... Showbutting would be one way of vaunting, of, of vaunting yourself or having pride. You also might be someone who is kind of like stuck up, or we call them stuck up. That might be someone who also is kind of just not following that fruit of the spirit of love right there, having that uh, pride. All right, next one I want to talk about is not easily provoked, not easily angered. Look at all these YouTubers. They got angry. I bet some of you have seen this on YouTube, if you've watched any YouTube videos, but even in your own life. How many of you, your brother, especially right now while we're isolated, your brother or sister does something to make you upset, and boy, you just blow up. Oh, my goodness. Just showing all that anger. Well, the last one is love thinketh no evil. I don't even know if I put this one on a slide, but it is where you're deciding to do wicked things. Sometimes people think, okay, thinketh no evil. Well, sometimes I think evil thoughts. Well, yeah, we all sometimes have thoughts that come in our head. But when you look it up, what it actually means, it means you're deciding to do wicked things or things that would harm others. And I hope we would never, never do that. All right, so love. Love, love, love. All you need is love. So we want to make sure that our fruit of the Spirit is love. Jesus was asked this question once. In Matthew 22, someone came to him and said, Master, what's the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, might, and strength. And the second commandment, greatest commandment was to love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on all of these, you're going to hang all the commandments. So every commandment you think of, it's based on love. Thou shalt not kill. Oh. I'm going to love my, my friends and not kill them. Thou shalt not steal. Oh, I'm going to love people, and I'm not going to take from them. So every commandment is about love. So love is an extremely part of having that fruit of the Spirit. Now, how many of you have the Holy Ghost? So if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Spirit of God within you. So you can feel that spirit move through you. Sometimes it might check you and say, hey, I don't think that's the right thing to do. And the fruit of our spirit, all of these things, love is a manifestation or an, exib uh, an exhibit or a demonstration of or an evidence of 
the spirit that we have inside of us. So when we are showing, we're not showing love, we're not showing the spirit of God that is actually living with us, within us. And if you remember the one scripture that I told you about that Jesus was talking about the fruit on the vine, he said a healthy tree bears good fruit and a unhealthy tree is going to bear poor fruit. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, if, um, well, sometimes I do these things that I shouldn't do. Sometimes I don't show love. If you're thinking all those things and you say, you know what, does that mean I don't have the Holy Ghost? No, it doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Ghost, but it may mean that your tree, yourself, you're not in a very healthy state right now. So we're going to pray in just a few minutes, a few seconds, and we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to help us to show forth the love that God has given us. God gave us When he gave us the spirit, he gave us that fruit that can come out of us and show love to other people. So right now, let's close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that you will touch every student that's listening. God, you see our hearts. You know, Lord Jesus, our minds. You know where we are, God. You know sometimes we mess up. Lord, we're human. But God, we want that spirit within us. We want the fruit of the spirit to be evidence in our heart. We want, Lord Jesus, to other people to see that we love you, God. You said by your fruits, you will know them. And we want our fruit to be showing your love, to show, Lord Jesus, others that we are kind and generous, considerate, not easily angered. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you will work in our hearts today. In your precious name, Lord God, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, so much, Lord. You're such a great God, such a holy God, such a wonderful Savior, Lord Jesus. Love you. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind. for 